for cheap, fast, and reliable coins. Make sure to head on over to my sponsor, buymadencoins.com. They got quick delivery, 24-7 support, and make sure to use code POOL at checkout for 20% off and an extra 10% coins at checkout. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another Mad Little Team video. And today, I'm going to be going over something different. So, as far as today, I'm going to be talking about where Madden went wrong this year and my possible solutions, if there is some for some of them. So, before I get into the video, guys, I know you guys have been wanting to see the new Mutt series that I just created. I think I'm going to be calling it Wheel of Pup. As in Poodle, Pup, you know, you get it. So, Wheel of Pup. I think, I think that sounds cool. It's a thought. But anyways... First episode should be going live, whether it is today, tomorrow, or Monday. It all depends. I want to get it finished and edited. The weekend's usually a tougher time for me to do certain things. My, the weekdays are actually easier for me, depending. But before, anyways, anyways, just just stay on the lookout for that. I will be getting into that. Also, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you've been enjoying my content. Hopefully, we can get this video to 50 likes. It's about it. It's all I expect right now. So let's get into the video. So first things first, right? Where Madden went wrong. So Madden made the mistake a busting too early they allowed things to go on they allowed things to get kind of too quick for themselves to keep up with they, they created a pace that was unsustainable which you can't do now did i appreciate the beginning madden was so good in the beginning of the year but that pace was unsustainable so for instance the way content was getting dropped in the beginning of the year was crazy the way content was getting dropped on the the christmas promo pretty much was so good that it was hard for madden to count to, to match that again like the coins that were able to be made in the first half of the year, the, the amount of cards you were able to get, the amount of teams that you were able to build, how easy it was to be no money spent, and that all changed in the second half. Like, it's hard. So like the first 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 half of Madden, I didn't buy I didn't need to buy packs, buy coins, nothing. I was just grinding. It was so easy. Second half it dies down, and then by by, by where we are now, it's like completely just dead. So first thing is training. I do I first I love training. I thought it was awesome. But then we get to the second half of the year, and every game online is the same limited time players, the same power pass players with training, the same power to players, the same chems. Everyone has tier three sprint or whatever. Everyone has max go deep. Everyone has max lockdown. Everyone has max pass rush. Everyone has max out John Madden. So like, everyone on the team has a 99 speed. Everyone has max passing. Like, it comes down to like who bl every Madden game now is who blinks first, which necessarily isn't always cool because. When you really think about it, you could be so much better than someone else, but if you blink first, you lose, right? Because in this in this year, the other person could have all 99 passing because of chems and everything that they shouldn't have yet, but they do. So now everyone's doing perfect things. So pretty much it comes down to who the game screws first. You don't even have to mess up. It's sometimes it comes down to who the game. You could be having a perfect game back and forth, and then a random fumble happens. Now, now you're screwed. The momentum goes the other way. So. Training got, it has to be, it also, there's another issue with training before I get into it, but training has to be revamped also because you can no longer have a nice market anymore. If you look, cards should not be certain prices, but they are because of training. That's, that's, that's just a simple fact of it. See, like, let me just tell you that a years ago, you pull Michael Vick, that card is well above 800 k for the majority of the year until the towards the end end but he's so expensive because he's michael vick same with lawrence taylor but due to training and due to other reasons michael vick and due to chemistry michael vick is less valuable in years past the only way you got that speed in a quarterback was waiting for that michael vick now the other michael vick you just power it up you came it up put sprinter on it tear it up put it on the theme team 99 speed so what's so special about this michael vick now it's not so now look he's at 386 right now and still going down so now if you pull this Michael Vick, you're like, oh my God, I got Michael Vick. And you get to put him up and you're like, he goes for only 400K. You can't even, that's the best pull. You can't even be excited about it anymore. Unless you get a limited time, obviously, but it's an anomaly. And then look, you're like, and then likewise, like let's say on the other hand, you're like, oh my God, 98 Ultimate Legend, <clears throat> Deacon, J Walter Payton, holy crap. And then you're like, let me put this up, 220. Why is he 220? And then you realize... Oh, wow, because all the 98s are all the same training value. So if you're not Vic or Lawrence Taylor or one of those guys, you're pretty much just below average, and you're just going to be put into the lowest tier. Like, years ago, these cards went for minimum 400k. Obviously, it went down as the year went on, but, like, the worst pull shouldn't be crap. Like, you this is a $100 bundle. That's what I don't get about buying this bundle, right? That's another issue, bundles. I mean, I'm just going to keep stringing them together. So bundles, you pay for a $100 bundle, right? And the best card you can get out of there is 98 overall. Now, but before Ed Reed, 98 overall. Now, you get the best overall, right? 
the, uh, the, the, the lowest, the best thing you get is 98 overall. And let's say you get it. Let's say the odds that you get, they're low. The odds of you opening that bundle get a 98 overall low. And let's say you get it. Walter Payton, 200k, bundle over. So you made at max with Walter Payton and everything else, maybe 500k. And you're like, wow, I made 500k on $100. And you realize, wait, I could have bought like a million coins. Could have bought like a million coins with that on a coin sponsor. So you could always double your coins. So let's say, let's say you pull a limited time card and a Walt and, an, and two Walter Paytons. A limited time card, two Walter Paytons out of a four bundle or whatever, six bundle. Those are like, that's like the rarest bundle you can get. A limited time and two Walter Paytons. You add that up, that's still under a million coins. If you have to quick sell it, you could probably sell it. Probably about a million coins if you sell it for like 600k that limited time. So you made a million coins on the rarest, like the best possible outcome is the amount it would cost you to buy coins. And then EA wonders why everyone's buying coins. People are buying coins because it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense at all. The best possible luck you could have, which is so unlikely, it's probably a better chance of getting struck by lightning than you individually pulling a limited time, 298s, and still having a really good pack opening, breaking over a million coins. You can just go to coin sponsor and within five minutes from any coin sponsor, have a million coins. It is that simple. It just, it just, it just doesn't make sense to me. Like what they were thinking with these bundles, and what makes less sense to me is why people are still buying them. It does. It's. I mean, I'm glad. I guess people buy them because I make, I make profit off of them. People buy them, and right now they're selling them for cheap because it's Ultimate Legend Saturday, and then I just buy them for cheap, and then I resell them later. But besides the point, it doesn't make sense to me. Now it's like now to take it another step further is chemistries. I okay. In the beginning of the year, chemistries were awesome, right? Chemistries were good the first half. They sucked the ass the second half. The reason for that is because. First half, you have 91 Michael Vick, right? He can run, but his passing isn't so good. You get some cams, you get some sprints, you get some cool things. Now he's a pretty good passer. Now he's usable. Now, he, now, he, now he's really good, right? But here's the issue. It was exponential, right? Your cards were like this, coming up, coming up, coming up. And as cards were getting better, then it was like, now every card's a 99. Every card. Every card is 99. Start. Everyone has 99 speed now. Everyone has 99 this. So now pretty much, if, if EA drops a card right now, if EA drops a card without a 90, Five plus speed it is a waste brian urlacher came out last year a year or two ago brian urlacher comes out right now with a 89 speed like oh my god urlacher Ur oh my god we got a brian Ur and now ew 89 speed waste of card not being touched like you know what i'm saying demarcus or uh, demarcus where 90 speed eh, it's okay L all people care about now is a 95 speed because if you put sprinter and power him up 99 speed so pretty much if a card can't get 99 speed, it's a waste at this point of the year. Because this is crazy. In most years, only a few cards got that 99 tier. And you weren't able to get speed up like you are able to this year. This year, you can get a card from 90 to 99. You power them up for one. You get three sprinters, whatever. And then you get the John Madden times two. I think, if you, I think you can get that at a point. And you get his theme team, another plus three. You can literally get a guy from almost 90 to 99. So the point is, is that if you don't have a 99 speed, you're a waste. This Dan Marino came out, a quarterback, and people were like, he only has a 64 speed. Eh, it's a waste. I'd rather have Tom Brady. They put such an I understand speed's important, but I remember in years past, like, speed wasn't. Like, back years ago in Madden, like, yeah, speed was speed was killer, but you cared about the stats. Like, you cared about the throwing stats. Like, you, oh my god, Dan Marino, I love Dan Marino, my favorite quarterback now. It's like, everyone needs Mike Vick. Everyone needs Barry Sanders, or everyone uses their Ricky Williams. Everyone uses Calvin. Everyone uses, and now Tyree Kill is even usable. Tyree Kill was like, such a fun player to have months ago now since everyone's 99 speed Tyreek Hill is actually uh, he's overvalued now everyone's like Tyreek Hill's ass because Tyreek Hill may have been small but he was so fast now Calvin Odell let's say Chad all these wide receivers can get 99 speed let me see if I found some more I don't know where they are but you get the point they can all have 99 speed now so what's the point of Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill is an un Tyreek Hill is a, a, a super fast, really tiny, decent catcher. So now you can you can trade him for Calvin Johnson. He's a huge monster, 99 catching stats all around, and a 99 super fast. So what makes more sense to you? The small little midget that's fast that can that can only catch and run straight lines, or Calvin, who can literally get the ball and do exactly what he can do, except he's a 6'5 red zone tight end type monster like it just doesn't make sense where ea thought they were going with this now i don't want to keep this going too long I'm trying to go over the, the basics of what i thought was wrong most important thing so we got chemistries training packs the market 
the reason coin sponsors are running wild this year is because it just doesn't make sense to buy anymore. I could literally give you math, factual statistics to show you it is never worth it to do it. It just isn't worth it. Now, another issue, their effort. Their effort this year has slowed. You can see from day one, like the first week was like a banger. Like, oh my God, this is the best game ever. Even though, and it got better. It got literally better. Christmas promo, Thanksgiving. Wow, this is really cool. This promo is awesome. And this like the Christmas promo was like the climax of the movie. I was like, oh my God, I just made 6 million coins. Everyone made coins. Everyone won. This was the best promo ever. Oh my god, I can't believe how are they ever gonna top this? They didn't. We get to the we get to like the next promo. It's like, eh, it's alright. Uh, what's wrong with this game? Oh my god, they, and then the gameplay starts to suck too. It was just like the whole thing just fell apart. They they need to be more consistent next year. Maybe they gotta come out slower next year. You know, like in years past, they usually come out slower and build up. This year they went like that. Everyone like busted, and then it was like, and then that was it. Game over. They can't do that because this killed the longevity of this year. Like. The, long the longevity of this game, like for like everyone's just trashing it now. They're getting the worst negativity I've ever seen on a Madden game in Madden's franchise, and they have to deal with this till August until the new one comes out, or listen to this more hype about the next game because they they can't they have to they they can't just give up on a game, and that is exactly what they did here. They gave up on this game. So I hope you guys enjoyed the feedback. I hope you guys take this into consideration. Hopefully someone sees this of relevance because this was ridiculous this year. I really, really like this game, so I hate Trash Guy. I really did. Truthfully, this is the only Madden I played this long. I've had so much fun on this Madden. I've never played Weekend League and all that stuff, and I just, I loved it. But it got to a point where Weekend Week League was like 25 games of, 25 games of like shooting a, shooting a ball into a basket. Like, okay, that one went in, that one went in. Oh, I missed that one. Okay, okay, 18, 18 and 7. Okay, that was fun. Unless you're like a pro competitive player. Pro competitive players are obviously so good that like, even they lose sometimes, but you get what I'm saying? Like, even pro-competitive players had struggles with the gameplay. So, imagine me. A very, very good player. Very above average. But, if I but I can literally lose to an average player because of just how the game mechanics are. Now, pro players are a little... It's, it's better for them because they could be almost everyone. They really have to get screwed to lose, but that's because that's why they're pro players. They're, you know, they're really amazing. Like, they take this game very seriously when it comes to that. But, besides the point, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys find this useful. I hope you guys were entertained. Hopefully, I can get the next Wheel of Pup, if that's the name, out within the next two days or so. And then hopefully, we can make this an ongoing series for us in Madden. Hopefully, you guys enjoy it. Hopefully, it could be a fixture for the future. And that's really it. Hope hope we can get great things going to Madden 20. Hope this channel takes off come Madden 20. And that's about it, boys. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys in the next video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm still going for 3K. It's looking very unlikely this month. The channel is very, very slow right now. It's also the time period of Madden. I completely get it. That's it, boys. 50 likes. Please, please like. Please comment. Tell me what you agree with, what you disagree with. I'm out. See you guys in the next video.